We have one other recognition, and uh, coach of our boys' baseball team, along with the starting pitcher, <laughs> is here this evening, and we have invited uh, members of the team as well, and uh, really are what a great season this year, runner-up uh, Class L championship. It was a thrilling game. It was a nail-biter. Uh, yeah. Two hits versus one hit, you can't beat it, right? We also have the certificate of recognition for you, Class L State Baseball Finalist. Remember, with the hot day too. Right. <laughs> did a great job. Yeah, and Jody were there as well. Congratulations, you were all very proud. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Members of the team are playing tonight. It's you know that 365 days playing baseball. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I just like to uh, say you're more than welcome to stay for the remainder. If you'd like to come up, we'll take a short pause and allow you to. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Enjoy Bye. your summer. Bye. 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 Just as a quick little evening oversight of, um, see, all the administrators are back. <laughs> what is this about? And I was reminded when we had our students here tonight in the baseball team, but you're always welcome, but it's fine. Thank you. Okay, let's see, where are we at this point? Do um, so we have some items from executive session? We do, but I think we have that. Yes. We're going to move right at this time to our two items, or more than two, but two items from the executive section on agreement between the Water for Board of Ed Local 1303-2009 Council uh, pair of professionals with the contract from July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2016, which was an item in our executive session. Is there a member of the board that would like to make a motion with that regard? Joseph? I'd like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education approve the agreement between the Waterford Board of Education and Local 1303-209 of Council for AFSCME Paraprofessionals from July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2016. Thank you, Jody. Is there a second? Second. Second by John. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. You want to vote? That motion carries unanimously. That will take us to our second action, an agreement between the Board for Board of Ed and Food Service employees. If you would please read the full motion, if someone would like to make that motion. Sure. The, uh, I move that the Warford Board of Education approve the agreement between the Warford Board of Education and the United Public Service Employees Union, Waterford DOE Food Service Employees Unit, July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2016. Thank you, Tim. Is there a second to that motion? Second by David. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries unanimously as well. And I thank all the parties involved in all of these negotiations uh, for the fine work that was accomplished. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, we will move to a uh, third item of the executive session on a confidential student matter. And with one, would a board member please make the motion? I move that the Waterford Board of Education accepts the stipulated agreement and moves to expel student H. 2013, who was the subject of the executive session. Thank you for that motion, Lynn. <coughs> the second motion. Second by David. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion here is unanimously. And the final call of action from our executive session is with respect to the superintendent's uh, contract. And before we move uh, to the motion, uh, on acceptance of the superintendent's contract, I'd like to offer this moment for any board members that wish to make a comment about the superintendent. I will take the floor, but Jody? Well, I'd like to thank Jerry for the wonderful job that he did this year. Um, 
successfully. And I think it was wonderful that you opened up our board meetings to the public and you invited other elected officials to come. And the savings with our uh, health insurance and the uh, good team of health care and the other administrators and the teachers and uh, also coming to a lot of the after school events, uh, the basketball games and uh, the baseball games, softball, and also parents of the Avon Council. Uh, and also the school building committee. Um, that's been a <laughs> big, big task the last couple of years. So you've done, you've done a very good job. Thank you, Cody. And I'd also like to thank you for all your your hard work and hours and hours of everything you've put in and um, got the new school opened up and so many other things accomplished. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, before we uh, move to any action, I'd also like to say that the board thoroughly um, reviews the superintendent's roles and responsibilities and found that the uh, superintendent excelled in all of those areas that were discussed, um, particularly the board was very pleased from the board had established one of its goals last year to, uh, to continuously be looking at cost efficiencies and cost savings, and the superintendent took that mandate very seriously, and uh, we looked probably over the last few years to save this district millions of dollars. Uh, as was just highlighted, particularly in the area of the uh, health insurance costs that we seem to have stabilized that over the years. So there's been a lot of good work done with uh, in that business area and that has allowed the district to continue with the quality of the programs that we've had. Uh, I think that's going to be an ongoing uh, initiative with the administration and the board to continuously be improving our programs and that we continuously bring student achievement. So the board was very pleased that we were able to stabilize the, that the superintendent was able to really take hold of that and keep it uh, creatively looking to find new cost efficiencies to allow us to continue with our program. So overall the board highlighted all of those particular areas. So you're welcome. Okay. I just forgot to say something. I wanted to also thank Jerry and Jay and Craig for the uh, savings for the high school, um, having it renovated new, and along with um, Andrea and uh, Andrea Sullivan at Betsy Ritter, um, that saved the town $2.4 million. Right. So that was a huge savings, and uh, all three of you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other comments before we move? Hearing none, uh, oh. we can move to an action on the. Oh, sorry. we have a motion. No, I know. I'm oh. going to ask Paul for the motion now. I'm thanking you. I can move to it. If not, uh, you always like the motion. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> to move that the Waterford Board of Education authorizes the board chair to renew the contract of the superintendent of schools for the three year term of 2013 14 through 2015 16 with a salary increase of 4% for the year 2013-14, and with such other changes in to terms and conditions of employment she may deem appropriate. Thank you for that motion, John. Is there a second? Second by David. Any discussion? Hearing none, we can move to a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And that takes us right to our consent agenda, which is comprised of minutes of the May 23rd regular meeting, the monthly expenditure report for May 2013, food service report for 2013. Um, are there any comments or directions to the consent agenda? Additions? So, you know, I just had a question um, with the equipment line items. Yeah. Those so are the three bands that we oh, purchased for the savings and the right. student transportation. That's right. That's another part. Good. Thank you. Any other comments? Any none? Would someone like to make a motion to report the consent agenda with those items listed? So moved. Thank you, Jody. Second. Second by David. There's no further discussion. We move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Um, All right. Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Reading the correspondence 
superintendent? I have none at this time. Okay. I just have for the board a letter from Sharon Stitzel. Dear Kathleen and board members, thank you for recognizing my years of service as a music teacher in Waterford. My lovely Waterford crystal clock is sitting right where I can see it every day. Sharon Stitzel. And second, thank you note from Mary Ann Hauser. Dear Board of Education, your lovely gift of a Waterford crystal clock sits proudly on the desk in my home, and it serves as a reminder to me of the partnership between the board of the, the board and the classroom teacher. Thank you sincerely for your kindness to me as I retire from an enormously satisfying experience of teaching Waterford Middle School students. Finally, Mary Ann Hauser. And then the only other piece is just a reminder that third annual case summer leadership conference will be held on July 24th. Anyone interested in that? Okay. Our fund is brought. Thank you. Um, that can take us right to your report. I just wanted to uh, just comment and highlight on uh, the three grade five promotions as well as the middle school promotion and the Waterford High School graduation. Uh, five just great events. Uh, they were wonderful. The weather cooperated. Uh, we did need to go indoors for the middle school and the high school auditorium. And I have to tell you, the renovation certainly served us well. It was climate controlled and I think all but 10 people were able to sit. It was well attended, and uh, all five events were very festive and a, a lot of fun. It was great to see the smiles on the faces of not only the students, but the parents, grandparents, and, and the staff. Great. I also wanted to just comment on, uh, here we are, it's, I think it's June 27th, probably one of the latest dismissals that I've ever experienced in my career. But really, as we look back on this year, it was a busy and a very productive year and really hats off uh, to all of our staff and students and parents and in particular the Board of Education for your support of the Waterford Public Schools. We greatly appreciate it. We accomplished a great deal and I think we uh, functioned very well as a team in doing the work uh, that was before us. And uh, when we met last during May, uh, we were uh, we had submitted the evaluation plans for both teachers and administrators. We've received some feedback from the state, and I'm going to ask uh, Craig Powers to just give us a brief update. Sure. So, uh, start with the teacher uh, plan. The state really looked at uh, 19 discrete areas uh, to evaluate the plan, and there were uh, three minor areas where we had a partial need, and, and it's really uh, just more clarification. Uh, so the intent was there. We can just spell it out here in a couple areas we could. So we've uh, done a revision of that. And uh, with the administrator uh, plan again, uh, they've evaluated 19 areas. And um, the prototype plan that uh, they gave uh, all the districts for the administrator plan was deficient in three areas. So everyone kind of missed those three. And, and uh, there were three other partial needs that uh, we just had to kind of share off. So those have been done. We're going to resubmit it. Uh, we have uh, every uh, sort of confidence in the world that this will uh, meet the uh, standards uh, set by the uh, State Department. And then uh, we'll be printing those documents uh, for dissemination and we'll be ready for a full presentation this coming August. So, Craig, those areas that the state found that needed some further... So, an example, um, uh, <coughs> we said that we needed two SLOs because we didn't explicitly say that each of them were worth 22.5%. We had to explicitly say that. Um, Very careful. Yeah. I mean, when we say partially met, I mean, it was really those semantic things. Uh, so, when we said that there would be... Um, uh, Every administrator would be trained. Um, we didn't say that they would be trained annually. So we, we just needed to kind of, again, increase that. Uh, so minor, really minor areas there. Um, and and there, there won't be any time left. We can do that right away. Thank you. So do July 1. Thank you. How long does it take to train the administrators? Is it just like a one day course? Or no. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 32 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> so, albeit uh, we're, we're here at the 
end of June, and we're going to have a very short summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry and I will be uh, uh, trained um, again through uh, TAPS for four days, and uh, our new administrators will be trained to learn for five days this summer. Uh, and um, Andre uh, gets so lucky uh, to be trained all nine days. Uh, because he has to uh, evaluate not only teachers, but two uh, administrators as well. And so he is very thorough and uh, offered through our reps. Thank you for that report, And I just had one other thing to let you know. Bob Serpensky, who we hired as our Director of Finance and Operations, will start on Monday and he'll be with us at our next board meeting. So he's looking forward to it. He's had an opportunity to be in uh, over the past month, uh, four different days, working alongside Bill to really ensure a smooth transition. So uh, Bob's really looking forward to joining the Waterford School System. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to committee reports, I would just also like to uh, let the administrators and teachers know how well behaved the students were at all of the graduations. So it's a real credit to your work and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, that moves us right to the committee and other reports. I know Jody has some reports. Do you? Oh, I do. I <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Okay, Youth Service Bureaus, um, they're getting ready to start Camp Dash. Uh, all six weeks of the programs is, are almost all full. And what I thought was great about Camp Dash is the fact that the parents don't have to pay for the full six weeks. They could pick and choose whichever week they would like their uh, child to go, which is, is great. I know the children last year had a you know, wonderful time. A lot of the counselors that were there last year came back. Two directors were there, and they added more staff because there's more, more children. So. I'm um, looking forward to getting some good reports that I'll be able to get back to you at our next meeting. Um, Jerry had our last liaison council meeting, parents liaison council meeting um, last week. It was hard finding a date that most of us can make in June. The but best attendance of the year. Yeah. Really. yeah, we had such a great group of parents this year, and uh, and Jerry did very well with the parents too, as far as they were concerned about communication, you know, out to other parents and. Um, we were able to fix a couple things, and I hope these parents come back again next year because it was it was it's like you got re-energized when the parents leave on council got re-energized, and they're going to work on a project that um, they're going to try to think of something that all all the schools can do together. And um, we mentioned just so everybody knows too, the Waterford Youth Service Bureau is sponsoring um, a family movie night during Waterford Week. I think it's on that Monday, and they're going to um, it'll be publicized. I'm not sure what, which movie they're going to show, but. Um, It'll be a nice family night. We're going to have it at Clark Lane outdoors because we put in the um, nice outdoor amphitheater. And it's hardly ever used, so uh, I think it'll be nice you know, for parents. They could bring their chairs and their children and, uh, and sit back and relax and watch a nice family movie for a change. Uh, our school building committee, as Jerry said, we're not going to show these when the school is open. We still have several challenges in front of us that um, we're going to be working on. We're going to be working at the high school, demolishing the old part of the high school um, over the summer, <coughs> and we're going to be fixing the baseball field, make, making sure that's all set. And uh, Jerry and Jay and uh, Craig are over, overseeing everything. Uh, so I hope, you know, but when the children come back to school in August, the, the grounds outside will be finished too. But we've gotten so many compliments about the building itself and how clean it is. And, and I had the uh, opportunity to be there the other day. Uh, Dave Seuss invited me to the... Um, an athletic breakfast that he has for the for the athletes that are graduating, and uh, I went there, and you're absolutely right. You go in the halls, and it's so quiet; you can't hear anything. So, and the students seem to be very happy there. So that's what's important. And that's it. Thank you very much. Sir. Any other reports? <coughs> I don't think um, the policy committee we uh, just caught up with all our policies, which you're going to hear about in minutes. So there's no report we will go right by that. Um, and that then moves us right to our new business, which includes the first item would be the Park Lane Middle School Discipline Code. So one of the things that the board does at uh, the conclusion of the school year is look at any of the changes just to be aware per your policy. And so you have before you the existing discipline uh, section of the uh, Middle School Code of Conduct. 
and there are no changes being suggested, so we just bring that to your attention. The second item uh, relates to the uh, high school discipline code, and uh, the changes are reflective of the policies that are going to be upgraded and updated. Did I say that correctly? That's right. And they go along with technology. Right. Right. So it now uh, makes the uh, code of conduct in alignment with the revisions to the board policy. Even though there is no change to change, I think the board will, will take action and re these. It's going in the hands of both. Yes, I, I don't know if action is, is required. Um, no, it, it uh, was a request several years ago that uh, since suspensions were a policy, uh, how could a child be suspended? And so we brought that information to me. That's up to the board. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it doesn't hurt us to give, give our consent on it. So we can put we can put both the uh, Park Lane and the high school in one function okay. to take action that we approve. Uh, with with the changes, so someone please uh, make that motion. So moved. Thank you, Jody. Excuse me. I'll second that. Second hand going up. Second by Jody. Is there any discussion on that? I think it's been working out. It seems to be working out. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So the next item on our agenda is really pro forma. Uh, especially with the change in our uh, director of finance. So this now authorizes Robert Sapensky along with myself uh, to be the uh, signees on the various reimbursement requests related to the child nutrition programs. I just want to comment that uh, at our next business meeting, I will bring a uh, motion forward just to have a general authorization so we're not doing this for each individual item each and every time. So uh, we worked on that this afternoon and we'll do that at uh, a future meeting. But we will take a, we're going to take a motion to Bob and signature. Uh, Bob will right. need to start signing on Monday. Okay. Uh, would someone make the motion to give that authorization? Or so moved. Thank you. Second. Second by Ann. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. 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 Again, with the open work for high school, um, we wanted to expand and, and uh, allow for the wireless facilities by uh, having uh, children who might want to bring in their uh, own uh, devices that could access the internet to, to help in their research skills, to start in their accessing of uh, Google Docs, uh, which then could be sent to our regional uh, printers. And so, uh, before you tonight is uh, a plan that we vetted through uh, the policy subcommittee. Um, Andre was uh, at the meeting uh, and gave us some great insights. And, uh, his prior district uh, had worked on this policy successfully. And, uh, so I'll be happy to answer any, any questions. Just remind the board that this is the first reading of this particular policy. Do we have any questions? For this clarification, yep. so we've updated the high school code to a policy that we have not yet approved. Uh, We're a little so out of sequence here. Well, slightly, but this has to be um, mass produced and disseminated to the kids in mm -hmm. August, and it would be our intent uh, if it was successful with the first reading that in August we would approve this policy. So we are. Um, Anticipate approval. Okay. Approval. Uh, okay. But if something goes off the rails, we could uh, send the data sheet to the code of conduct uh, and, and make those stuff. So if you have any concerns related to this, this would be an opportunity. The only question I had was 
homes, cell phones. Is that in this within the scope of privately owned technology? Yes, it is because uh, a smartphone uh, would have access to the yeah. uh, internet, and we really um, want to give uh, teachers the opportunity to have uh, all kids doing some research, uh, all kids have access to the uh, Google Docs and other ways to kind of streamline. So the sentence uh, in under use of privately owned technology devices, the second paragraph, use of any such device for improper purpose is prohibited. And then it gives examples of improper use. Uh, but they're still not allowed to sit in the classroom and text other classmates. And that would be an improper use. If the teacher basically is saying, okay, we want you to research this topic, and you're on uh, your laptop, iPad. So the use of that is really the teacher is going to say, you can, you can do this. Correct. But not this exclusion list here doesn't exclude all of the other things that. Well, if they're not following the classroom rules, then that's an exclusionary right. item. So that's I think that's what the change in the disciplinary policy is reflecting. This is now going to become a teacher. Uh, regulated usage. You know, the kids are going to all be allowed to have them now, and so teachers are going to be have to be the arbiters of whether or not their usage is appropriate. Right. And, and of course, obviously, there are going to be a times when you don't want them to be using them at all. Right. Um, and so, it, it, the change in the discipline code now, it's, the, it's no longer just a simple infraction to have the device out at any particular time because at times we may want you to have the device out because mm -hmm. we're going to be using your device to do research or to, to communicate in some fashion. So it's a, it's, it's a difficult area. It's an area that I think everybody is grappling with right now. Um, most, I think, school districts have come to the conclusion that the barn door has been left open and we, are, we no longer have real control over this device. And they do everything so they have games on them and they can text their friends on them and they can do all kinds of inappropriate things on them. But they can also do wonderful things on them and it's going to be up to us to be very vigilant and monitor their usage. And that's going to be up to teachers. Good luck. Thank <laughs> I think that Tim said that that would be concerned with the policy mini-level for short to emphasize that it's for educational purposes. And I appreciate um, the comment. I appreciate very much uh, holding the sections of the students to be advised that when they log on to the network that uh, they have to be careful because even though they're privately owned, they're subject to monitoring. So, thank you for holding that. Um, I think we tried to limit in some regards some of the devices that would be brought in. We did shorten some of the list, but I see you left on in other electronic devices, so perhaps it's just like we'll post, Andre will follow some guidance too to see how that, that works out, but I think that leaves us a little bit in case we've overlooked something but that it could be used for an education or purpose. Because I almost like it's kind of opening, but it's okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other comments? On, this is still frustrating. Um, pardon me? Oh, excuse me. The part that I didn't see. Okay. Wonder how did you get the calendar? Thank you. Different words. The colleagues are there. Um, well, again, I, the, I'm the locus of control. Control. the locus of control is still the classroom level. Classroom teaching. Um, it may not be appropriate uh, during the lesson for it to use the elementary. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not, then that's still not allowed in the classroom. We really think that, um, so a highly effective use of a phone is using uh, for world language, as an example. I think uh, a French, uh, a Spanish teacher, uh, a French teacher actually, before has children before their native language, mm -hmm. and it gets sent 
to uh, uh, sort of this holding place, and then the teacher could listen to the, them speak the native language and assess for their content, uh, which is highly effective because you could have all the kids do that at the same time. The teacher could listen to a, to a plan, give some positive feedback, as opposed to calling the child up one by one, which would consume a lot of time. So it's really, I think the locus of control is really at the teacher level um, for this policy. And it's really our intent to open up at the high school and see how that goes. But, but Marcia's point is well taken because we did discuss an age at one point, so maybe when we uh, support him, okay, this is our first reading of this, so it's actually continuous, you know, maybe that can be monitored at a higher level okay. to say how it's transmitted. I'm not sure. So okay. it says that uh, may possess mm -hmm. in accordance with the mandates of this policy. So it has to fit the purposes of right. this policy. Okay. 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 Well, my understanding would be in any particular classroom, not just in an elementary level, is today's lesson it is utterly inappropriate for anybody right. to be on any kind of a device. They're all away. That's right. You know, yeah. then anybody who's playing around with one is subject to discipline. Okay. And I would imagine that at a, in a fourth grade classroom, the opportunities for them to be used will be significantly less than perhaps at an 11th grade classroom where they may be used on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be it's definitely a great thing about parents and the book. the book. And then that becomes a distraction for those children who don't own a Kindle. And of course, that's going to be going to kids instead of turning And then, of course, there are the children who are more fortunate to have a Kindle and those who do not. Then I start, I start to think about those in classes. That's my first thought.
focus. It's not any uh, objection that on our second reading we can move so to the target. Okay, so uh, this, um, we, we've always had a, a fingerprinting uh, policy. The legislation is really required to do a DCF registry check, uh, and so that component is uh, included here. Again, it's not something that we waited for. Uh, we really started this uh, this past July, um, but we wanted to properly set this policy through the committee. And, um, this brings us up to a statutory requirement. I just have a question. Did we did we do background checks on volunteers? Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the scope of work for volunteers. So if a parent is just coming into the classroom uh, for one visit, uh, we really don't. If there is some reason why we need to be concerned with that, uh, then uh, the principal will have that information. If it's a, it's a volunteer on a long-term basis, so they uh, the union volunteers mm -hmm. is vetted through new service and cool. background checks are done. Uh, if it's any of our interns or if anybody who's working in a long time basis would use uh, the background check. The reason I ask is I'm still involved with Little League and any volunteer that we have, we have to do a background check on them now. I'm not just wondering you know, if we did it. Thank you. Okay. Um, just one and they talk about, in the policy, they talk about the criminal check, but is there any ongoing, after, after you have someone employed, how do we monitor that? Is this person been in practice <coughs> and just say, just like, chance, oh, so the police department would get in touch with you? Believe it or not, any, uh, any uh, certified staff, the uh, police department that uh, run everybody who has a teaching credential through the state police uh, every six months. And so it's checked on an ongoing basis. Okay. Um, this one, oh, this school nurses, they're under different uh, kinds of how, how, how are they handled? Okay. So uh, DNA uh, is responsible for the hiring practice and we just require them to do the background check uh, and then they as a requirement. Them. Same would be with the FDA or uh, contractor. So they're responsible, but we require it as a condition of service. Thank you. If we, uh, yeah, we should actually we'll take them separately here. So does, does anyone else have any questions on the security check or anything on the Okay. If not, would someone here to make a motion to accept this policy? So I'd like to make a motion to accept policy 4112.5, 4212.5A, the security check and fingerprinting. Second. Thank you, ma'am. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we're going to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say policy is approved. Um, take the break to the acceptable use policy on uh, the board of use of the district computer. Great. And again, uh, we've always had an acceptable use policy. Uh, we've had one policy that covers all students and staff. Uh, we did with bifurcate the students and staff here. So the staff policy, as you can see, uh, is a little more germane to the adults. Uh, we used to also uh, do a uh, they had to sign a slip saying that they read it. Basically, we're saying now that there's no slip required. Uh, so the employees working with us have to obey all policies. Uh, and so that's, and we'll get to the difference of the students next. But um, when we were looking at this, uh, there were some. Um, we did some updating. Take updating, yeah. Any comments uh, from the board? This is a second reading, so we went quickly. <laughs> Other uh, meeting, so take a uh, look well, to be sure you don't have any comments or questions about it. Again, uh, I, I 
again, I appreciate the highlighting in the back on the part of the It's important that we keep doing that. Um, there are no comments, and so would you like to make a motion to accept the revision to our policy? It's a revision. I make a motion to accept the policy 4118.237 and 4218.237. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Second by David. No further discussion. We'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, that policy is accepted. And then that takes us right to our next question. <coughs> well, we did that. We need to do the student piece. For the next one would be the student one acceptable to the senior 5,000 series. And uh, this is a little more customized than for the student population. Uh, again, with uh, using uh, by storing information on a website like Google that we don't have a locus of control, there's uh, a sign off slip uh, as part of the policy subcommittee. There's a subcommittee of the board. I uh, felt that it would be appropriate to have a student uh, signature uh, in grades 3 through 12 as part of that so we understand uh, when they're doing this. And we have been uh, successfully using Google applications really in our middle school and our high school. Uh, and we hope to make it more common practice. That's really the change. Thank you, Craig. Any questions for Craig? Thank you. Any comments? Any comments? Again, I think this is the students are informed about the use on an annual on basis an annual through our. Uh, so every school has a school handbook, and then as a district, we do a district handbook for all, yes. and we put a lot of the board policies in that district. So there's an annual notification to all uh, students and parents. Thank you. So they they have a good understanding of what's expected. Thank you. Does someone care to make a motion for the uh, policy 5131.2? I'll make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education moves to approve policy 5131.2, acceptable use policy as presented. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, second to that motion. David, second. Any more discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No one opposed. That vote for policy is accepted. That takes us to our next policy, which is on suspected abuse of black script. And again, we've always had uh, suspected abuse in what to show the policy. Uh, there were successful requirements uh, to, to bring us uh, up to speed. Uh, we've reviewed it in major instances. Uh, they really include around the mandatory reporter. So who's required uh, to be a mandatory reporter has been expanded. Uh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when we were looking at this policy, uh, we really wanted to include a standard procedure, um, but it was a procedure outside of our regulations, which you'll see in the regulations where we really list exactly um, what to do in case of uh, something you have to report uh, using the budget to a uh, DCF. This is a practice that we've always done that's been disseminated through special services and figures to serve right the regulation. Are there any questions for Craig regarding this policy? Just a quick question. Um, I think I asked this before, but I can't remember the answer. Did we go over this with coaches also? Are they trained in order to, okay, I think I know. Thank you. I think this is a good enhancement to this uh, policy. Somebody to make a motion on approval of the new policy 5141 or update point 4. I'd like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education moves to approve policy number 5141.4, reports suspected abuse or neglect of children as presented. Thank you, Jody. Second. Second by Chancellor. Any discussion? More discussion. Hearing none, we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is voted unanimously. It takes us to, I think, I'm not sure, one of the suspected abuse, neglect of adults with intellectual disabilities. Okay. So, this is a new policy for us. It's, uh, uh, again, uh, kind of led by the statute. 
and it's really saying that if there is a uh, belt that really uh, is structurally stable and you are uh, abused, uh, is done, that again, as a mandatory reporter, uh, our responsibility then would even go to adults because of their uh, intellectual uh, capacity. And so it's a uh, new policy for us. Thank you, Craig. Any questions? The only one little comment I have just um, when you report to the Office of Protection and Advocacy, the numbers in the back, but I think there's reference to it earlier on, so we may just want to look that over and just well, that's okay. yeah, put it up that's so whoever may be looking doesn't have to go through it. I think this is also an excellent. Anyone, uh, if there are no other uh, questions, you did have this uh, as, as the first reading. If you'd like to make a motion to accept. Anyone? Okay. Does the Water for Board of Education move to approve policy 5141.41, report to suspected abuse or neglect of adults with intellectual disability as presented? Thank you, Joan. Second. Second by Sherry. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And before we close for adjournment, I would just like to recognize uh, Strike Powers because he's worked very hard this year on all of the policies. He kept the board right on track. We got through all of these at times of the year. We will very successfully succeed. I, I just would like to remind the board. In your spare time, I hope reading those policies. You go back and you ever see anything, please don't hesitate to come back to the policy committee for further review on any of this. I know uh, Craig is planning a meeting for us sometime this summer, so we'll resume. But I, I want to congratulate you and thank you for keeping us uh, on target here. And also, again, to all of the administrators that wish you a nice summer, the board, from the board. And it's a pleasure to see you. We didn't expect to see you tonight. Thank you for being here. And uh, everyone, a little rest and relaxation during the next month. Uh, I don't know how much you'll get, but good luck. <laughs> great wish. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, with that, motion to adjourn. Motion by Ann to adjourn. Second. Second by Tim. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.